Assembly design tables allow you to create and control configuration of the assembly using an Excel separate sheet. They control suppression of components, mates and assembly features, the configuration of parts and numeric values of distance and angle mates. Assembly design tables are used to create and document configurations. The options and procedures are very similar to those I covered in this separate lesson on part design table. If you have not done so already, it might be good to review that topic before diving right into design tables in assemblies. Since I won't go into all of the options again here, in this tutorial, I will be using a design table to quickly create configuration of this assembly to represent several different versions of it all within the same assembly file. Let's get started. If you would like to uh, need this 3D model of this trolley, I will send you via email. You can send me email. I will forward you uh, all the drawings related to this trolley. Open the existing assembly and hand truck once I give you a 3D model. Here I would like to add several configuration on this assembly using a design table. I will be begin by creating several configuration that represent the handle at various heights. Notice there are holes in the handle which can be lined up with the hole in the lower leg for a different height position. In this SOLIDWORKS assembly, there is actually a distance made that was used to control the height of the handle, which will look at situation. As I mentioned in the lesson on a part design table, this window can actually to be split to show both feature manager design tree and the configuration manager. But for the sake of clarity, it will be using a single pane and switching back and forth between tabs and as necessary. Right now the assembly only a single configuration named default but we will add more. To get started I'll create a design table by going to insert table excel design table. When the property manager appears I will use the auto create option and I will leave the rest of the options at their defaults. If you would like to a further explanation of these options review the separate tutorial on part design table or, or, or as always you can browse. I'll click OK and a pop up appear when I can select dimensions to add to the design table. To get started, I will select D1 handle overlap, which is actually a distance made dimension that sets the opposition of the handle. I'll click OK and the table is created. I'll go ahead and type of name of a few of the configuration I will be adding here. I will call the first one setting 02. The second one setting 04 and with the first two created I can highlight it both cells and drag the handle to quickly add the 06, 08 and 10 configurations. The table was a distance dimension which will be set to a different value of each configuration. In reality the holes in the handle are spaced 2 inches apart and must line up with the hole in the lower leg. So we will see distance dimension is 2 inches increments. To account for this, I can take advantage of Microsoft Excel data validation functionality, which allows you to limit the values that are entered in the cell. It will also make the design table more robust for future design by preventing them from entering a value that does not exist. To do this, I'll select the first cell next to the setting 02 configuration. Go to the data tab and select data validation. In the allow dropdown, I will choose list. And for the source, I will type in the allow, uh, allowable allowance 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 separated by commas. I'll click OK and notice the cell now has a drop down next to it. When you can see your allowable values that I entered in the list, to add this to the cell below, I will select the cell and drag the lower right corner down to setting 10 row. The cells are all now have to drop down with the list values I specified. I'll use this drop down as test and thus select the appropriate value for this configuration. I'll repeat this procedure to set all of the configurations. At this point, let's take a look at the configuration that have been created so far. I will exit the design table by clicking onto the graphic area and a message shows that the new configuration have been generated. I'll click OK. On the configuration manager tab as I double click on each configuration. 
you can see the result of the distance made changing in two inches increment I specified and the holes lines up as you see. At this point we have created a design table that represents the various handle heights due to a distance made that changes in two inch intervals. Next I would like to create another configuration of this assembly to show you how components can be suppressed or resolved. We will also discuss what happens to the existing configuration when introducing new components into other configurations. To get back into existing Excel design table, I'll expand the tables folder from the configuration manager tab, right click and click edit table. I'll dismiss the pop-up. I'll go ahead and add new configuration to the table standard. A configuration that will use a different wheel. I will add the drop down menu and set the handle height to 6 inches. Note that you can still zoom or scroll the model while the table is open. To use a different wheel, I must first suppress the wheel that is currently used. To do this, I will click on the next open cell of the second row in the table and double click on the component. This will add a design table parameter the suppressed state of the component with the current value of resolve. Note that the area many other types of design table parameter available as they can be found in the help file. To make things easier, you can use the abrasive abbreviation R for resolved and S for the other components. I'll set to R in each configuration except for S in this new standard configuration. Note that there are actually two instances of the component in the assembly and we only configured one. What what happens when click I graphic area after click OK? And activating standard, we can see that only one assistant of the tire pneumatic component was suppressed. Let's edit the table once more and I'll show you a method to address multiple instances of a component. After dismissing the pop-up, you'll notice in the table that the instance number appears in the bracket next to the component name. Rather than adding another cell to configure, all I have to do here is the type of the other instance by typing 2 inside the bracket after the 1. When I click back out the table, now you can see both instances are suppressed. For this standard configuration, I would like to use a different wheel, different than what is I used in any of other configuration. When we add another wheel, we need to know what happen will happen in other configuration that already include a wheel. The answer lies the, in the properties of each configuration. I'll right click on the one of the other configuration select properties. And the option I am interested in this one here, the advanced options. Call suppress new components. If this checkbox is selected, then any component that are added while the other configuration will be suppressed in this configuration. This is what I want. I also want suppress new feature and made selected. This behaves just like a suppress components checkbox when it is selected. Any new assembly features are made, so I add while other configuration will be steps in this configuration. I'll cancel this dialog. The easiest way to do this is use to configuration table. This table is generated when multiple configuration are created, contains all of the configured dimensions and features, and is sorted with the Excel design table. The table also controls the setting for each configuration. I'll right click to configuration table and click show table. Next I'll click hide show configuration parameter to show the parameters and hide show components to hide the components. Now we can click all checkbox in the suppress new feature and mates column. Click apply and OK. If we check the properties of configuration, we will see that both the settings we want are clicked. We don't need to the default configuration, so I'll right click on it and click delete and yes. Finally, I will add another wheel, the plastic, to the assembly. I'll click the 3D experience tab. Click search. Type tire plastic at the 3D search. Press enter. The results include several components with the same name. You can sort them in many ways. This shows latest first. 
I'll select the one that I want, drag into the work area and drop it. I'll make the entire plastic to the Excel component. Once I hit a position, I'll quickly make a copy of it holding down to control key on the keyboard, dragging and dropping it. After making the second instance, I would like to make one last chance to the standard configuration by pressing a few more components. So I'll switch over the feature manager design tree. I'll select the mounting plate and uh, caster components by shift selecting them. If I expand the fastener folder, I'll also select the first two nuts by holding down control as I select them. From the context menu, I can select the suppress icon. It is probably worth mentioning that when clicking this press icon, this change will only take effect in the active configuration standard in this case. I'll switch back to the configuration manager tab. If I switch to another configuration, you can see the difference between them. I'll edit the design table again. In the add rows and columns dialog, I'll select one of the two tire plastic components and click OK. And in the table, I can add the other instance using the same procedure as before by typing in other instance number. Note that these cells have pull downs for selecting either suppressed or resolved. Something that can take assembly design table to the next level. It is ability to specify configuration of any components or sub assemblies that are used in the main assembly, all from within the design table. If I open the leg support sub assembly in its own window, <laughs> and switch over the configuration manager tab, you can see that two configuration exist. The default configuration and other is called simple, which has once some geometry suppressed. I'll close this sub assembly without saving and go back to the main assembly. I would like to use a simple version of Lexport sub assembly in the standard configuration that I already have created. I'll edit the design table. In order to specify the configuration that I would like to use for the Lexport sub assembly, we'll use the configuration parameter. This time I will type into the design table manually. With design table parameters, the sun text is important. To add in the table, I'll click to the next available cell in row to type in the dollar sign. The word configuration followed by an hash symbol and then the component name as listed in the feature manager tree. In this case, leg support. This is not case sensitive. Next on open bracket this instance number one and since I would like to this affect both instances, I will add a dash and type two followed by a close bracket and press enter. In the cells below, I will type the configuration name default for the configuration I was working with previously. And for the standard configuration I will type in simple. Again, it's important that the configuration name you type in exactly matches the configuration name in the component or sub-assembly. We are done with the table, so I'll click to the graphic area to exit. In the standard configuration, right away you can see that the simple configuration is being used. Before wrapping up, I would like to create just one more configuration of this table. It will be similar to the setting 06 configuration but it will instead have the handle component rotated 90 degree and inserted into the other holes. Next, I'll, I will edit the table and add other configuration flatbed. Since much of this configuration will be similar to the existing setting 06 configuration, I'll copy the cell values and paste them. At this point, I will click off the table exit and SOLIDWORX let me know the flatbed configuration added. When I activate it, you can see it matches the setting 06 configuration that I copied the value from. As I mentioned, I would like to handle to fit into the other holes. To do this, I will need to suppress the mates that are currently used for the positioning. I'll click on the handle and from the pop-up, I'll choose the view, view mate icon. These are the mates that I will be suppressing here in this flatbed configuration. 
So I will shift to select them and click suppress. The handle is now free from move rotate. So I can now add the mates that I would like to use the positioning here in this configuration. I will add a couple of concentric mates followed by a con coincident mate. At this point, the flatbed configuration is complete. And I can toggle through all of the configuration I added this sample. I hope you like this tutorial and please subscribe my channel for like this informative videos. Thank you so much.